วัสดีทุกทุกคนนะครับ Good morning มายงอากาศตะนั้นวีพรีสและขอบคุณพระเจ้าทุกท่านที่ได้รับโอกาสนี้ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่เราได้มาที่นี่ที่We're already in the last part of Genesis chapter 31. Genesis chapter 31, verses 43 to the last part of uh, verse We're going to read only two verses, verses 43 and 44. All together with me, ready? Verse 43, begin. Then Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, and the children are my children. The flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do this day for this, my daughters, or for their children, whom they have born? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. Let us, let us pray. Father God in heaven, as we gather together today, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to study your word and take wisdom from the stories of old. Lord, we ask for your guidance and illumination as we dig in into the dynamics of mutual covenant found in the passage that we are about to, to, to study or to explore. Lord, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts and minds to receive the lessons you have for us today. And Lord, grant us understanding and insight as we reflect on the principles of faithfulness, trust, and mutual commitment exemplified in this narrative. Lord, this is our prayer in just name. Amen. Genesis 31. This is the last part, and this is the last day of Laban also. No? So starting from verse 43, as we go through into the life of Jacob, last month we discussed how, how, how Jacob reached a breaking point and openly expressed his frustration to his father-in-law, which is Laban, during their, their encounter as detailed in the, first, in the past verses from verse 22 through verse 42. And now, today, we will witness Laban's response. No? And later, the covenant established between Jacob and, and Laban. Uh, that's the context as we listen to the word of God in, in Genesis chapter 31, beginning from verse 43. So the title of our message is The Dynamic of Mutual Covenant. So, sa, sa mga naunang mga verses, we witness there that God's protection and only God's protection and blessing has kept Jacob from leaving empty-handed to return to his own people. Right? And this morning, in this passage, Laban is left not quiet, sp speechless. Huh? And Jacob was really gotten the, 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 the best of him. And there's nothing he can do here. Uh, and God has told Laban that he can't lay, what? A finger on Jacob and that he can't even say anything to him, good or, or bad. 
or, 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 or in other words, he can curse Jacob or threaten him to do anything or to, to injure him, nor can he do anything to attempt to entice him to come back sa, sa, sa land nila Laban no? or sa pagan land. And Laban's hands are, are tied here. And you would think in this circumstance that he would be what? Speechless. Di ba? Kay ginwarningan siya sa ginoo before. No? But from the count you have just read here, you recognize that Jacob does very little talk no? and Laban does a lot. No? Sa sininga last nga mga verses here. So he's not left speechless, but his words have not much power. No? So in this passage, Laban, no? nahambal ko nga fearful for that is what he is. Di ba? Laban the fearful suggests that he and Jacob make a covenant. Di ba? Sa mga nauna nga mga verses, we study there that nakita natin dira that Jacob feared his father-in-law which is Laban, right? That's the 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 very reason why he left Laban secretly. No? Pero dire sa sininga passage, makita natin that Laban is fearful. No? So the passage breaks into basically two parts. No? You can see here in verses 43 and 44, we see Laban makes this suggestion that they enter into a covenant relationship or that they confirm the relationship as a covenant relationship. No? Then in verses 45 through 55, we can see here the content of that covenant. Huh? And I want to suggest that even in what is no, clearly a secular covenant and a covenant which is made in the context of great distrust and fear that we have much to learn about God's covenant with us even by comparison and contrast to this human covenant. Huh? And let's look the passage together. No? Kita tadra in verses 43 and 44, Jacob and Laban enter into a, a covenant. No? Naglain ang font. Sorry. So then Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, and the children are my children. The flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do this day for this my daughters or for their children whom they have? Okay? Come now and let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. And me. No? So in these two verses here, Laban makes a suggestion here that he and Jacob enter into a covenant. Uh, but I want you to understand that Laban makes that suggestion because he fears Jacob. Uh, Laban, is un uh, uh, Laban is afraid that Jacob is one day going to gather, gather his forces and come back. And give him the due. Huh? And so Laban very strategically suggests that no, they make an alliance. That they make a, a, a solemn agreement of friendship before the presence of their gods to witness to one another that they will do no harm. Huh? Para after sini nga, nga covenant, wala na pakialaman ay. Huh? The reason that Laban makes that suggestion is not because of the possibility that Laban will do Jacob harm. 
No? And we understand that. And it is because no, of the possibility that no, sa mind ni, ni, ni Laban is ang possibility nga si Jacob will do harm to Laban. Kamu na nga nag-abot sa point sa mind ni, ni Laban to make this kind of friendship covenant. Ha? Because Laban is afraid to Jacob. No? And Jacob is clearly the greater is greater than 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 Laban and Jacob is the one who has been blessed by God. Balana ni Laban that Jacob has a powerful God who is always with him who who always bless Jacob. And Jacob is, is the one whose God has prospered even Laban and Laban has recognized that. And now, Jacob has been protected by his God as he has fled from Laban and Laban has nothing that he can do. And so, oh, Nag-abot sa point sa pangunauna ni Laban, no? ang covenant because of his fearfulness of Jacob. No? Para safe. Isn't it interesting that even a pagan knows to run to the covenant for refuge? Di ba? Pagan Huh? knows how to run to the covenant for refuge even pagan lava knows that what he needs to protect himself is the in, in, in this circumstance is a, a, a covenant he makes in verse 43 a false claim no ano ang banyo dira sa my verse 43 huh? And Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, then children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. Huh? Kita dada ang false claim ni Laban. Notice his words. The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks, all that you see is mine. But my hands are tied. Huh? What can I do? I'm going to be generous with you, Jacob. I'm going to let you have all these things that really belongs to me. Jacob. So let's make a covenant together. No? Wala agin sang imo diri. No? So let's make a covenant together since I'm letting you have all these things that I really belongs to me. At least you can do for me is enter into a covenant agreement. Kag makita tadra that si Jacob is still in silent. Huh? I want to suggest to you that this is part of the Lord's character discipline for, for Jacob. Remember, Jacob once stole a birthright that belongs to his brother, Esau. Now, he has to listen to a pagan Laban telling him that, that everything that he has really belongs to, to Laban. And God is disciplining Jacob, and Jacob, to his credit, no, doesn't open his mouth, and he's happy to 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 cooperate in the plan that Laban suggests. And so, fearful Laban asked for a covenant. Now I want you to note 
one specific thing about the covenant that Laban indicates here. Huh? Tanaw na to ng verse 44. So now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So in verse 44, Laban says that the covenant is to be the witness between, kasi sino? Jacob and Laban. No? But if you cast your eyes in verse 48, we're going to turn in verse 48. Amunay ang balda sa my verse 48. Silingin dara, Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore, he named it Gilead. Huh? This heap, huh? speaking of the stone, the pillar that Jacob has set up and the stones that have piled up around it. Huh? This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Huh? So, ano ang drag ni 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 and humble there's my verse 44 verse 44 no? let us make a covenant a witness but in verse 48 humble nya dera this heap is a witness no? the covenant itself is a witness and the heap is a symbol and it's also a witness no? now which is it is the covenant the witness or is or or is the heap of stone the witness no but and that the covenant itself is often seen as the witness representing the relationship between god and his people kag ang ining heap or the pile of stones can symbolize the covenant ha huh? serving as a physical reminder or marker of the covenant agreement between sa ginoo kag sang iya nga mga katawhan di ba kumbaga sa istoryahan ay sang lote may kontrata kag may muhun di ba contract paper kag ang landmark nga muhun di ba now is Which is it? Huh? Is it a covenant, the witness, or the heap of stone? Huh? A symbol is the witness. The answer, of course, is yes, the covenant is the witness, and the heap of stone is the witness. Huh? The covenant itself and the, the symbol, which is the, the, the pile of stone, is the witness. And you see this all throughout the Bible with covenants and the covenant sign. Huh? The covenant is the witness and the covenant sign is also a witness. Huh? Sometimes God speaks about the covenant sign as if it's the covenant. And sometimes He speaks about the covenant as it's the covenant covenant sign huh? let me give you two example huh? let give you an example here huh? in verse in in in, in chapter 15 In chapter 15, we've looked at this before, but it's an important point. And it may seem a little obscure, but it's significant. Because it helps us out of a mess in a couple of places sa, sa, sa New Testament. I'll show you one of the places it will help us. No? Help us out. Hambal niya dira? In chapter 15, verse 18, especially in verse 18, on that day, 
the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying to your offspring I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river of river Euphrates diba? kung tanawon ta diri sa my verse 18 kita ta diri that God confirming the covenant promises to Abraham in that ceremony that was performed there in, in Genesis chapter 15 and which is described from verses 12 down to 17 uh, and the Lord makes a covenant uh, and I'll tell you my verse I'll tell my verse 12 to 17 uh, as the sun was going down a deep sleep fell on Abraham and behold dreadful and great darkness fell upon him then the Lord said to Abraham know you're certain that your offspring will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs and will be servants there and they will be afflicted for 400 years no? but I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve and afterward they shall come out with great possessions as for you you shall go to your father in peace and you shall be buried in a good old age and they shall come back there in the fourth generation for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete when the sun had gone down and it was dark behold a smoking fire smoking fire pad and flaming torch passed between this pieces no? now turn forward to chapters of Genesis chapter 17 no? turn on to my verse 17 verse 2 ang that I may make my covenant between me and you and my and may multiply you greatly no? ang balda sa ginoo and I will establish my covenant between me and and you. Silingendra, I will make firm, I will confirm the covenant that already exists between me and you. And what is the stuff of that covenant? No? What is the, the, the content of that covenant? No? The, the, the Lord makes it very clear in verse 8. No? Balyadra, sa Genesis chapter 17 verse 8 I will give it to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be there their God and so the staff of this covenant is an eternal relationship with with God for Abraham and for his descendants and for blessing which flow from from that amo na ang content sa sininga covenant eternal relationship with with God so the covenant in its essence is confirming a special relationship with with God but look down to more verses and and God says in verse 10 Hambal niya sa my verse 10 sa chapter 17. Sila this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after, ye, after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. No? Now, i-cut out na itong dira ang clause in between. No? Like, saan na itong kaangay sini? Ha? Huh? Basaw na itong dungan. Ready? Begin. This is my covenant. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Basaw na itong liwat ang bilog ng verse. Together, begin. Every male shall be circumcised. Anong ginahambal niya dira? No. this is my covenant 
every male among you shall be circumcised. So what's the covenant here? What is the covenant here? Is the covenant, this relationship within Abraham and his descendants who trust in the Lord, have God as their God and they are his people? Is that the covenant? Or is the covenant anong ginamba niya dara? The circumcision. Huh? And in the language of this passage, the answer is Ano? Yes. Humble though. The covenant is ano? Circumcision. Why? Because God called the covenant sign the covenant. Huh? Ang covenant is ano ganito kagina? Ang content. Huh? Eternal relationship sang ginoo. Pero makita ta dire that the covenant here is not di ba? the circumcision nga man because God called the covenant sign the covenant if Abraham and his descendants were to to reject the covenant signs ano matabo it would be like rejecting the the covenant itself Considering how closely connected the sign is to the covenant as, as, as a witness. And God says, you have rejected the covenant because the covenant and the covenant sign are, 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 are that closely what, related. Diba? That's exactly what you see in Genesis chapter 31, verses 44 to 48. And in 48, the covenant is a witness. Uh, the heap of stone is also a witness. Uh, hindi po hindi ibaliwala ang atong symbol nga, nga, nga pile, of, pile of stone. Hindi po hindi ibaliwala ang, kung sa duta ta, ang, ano, ang muhun. Huh? Kung kisa gani, no, sa ato na. Kisa daw mas importante pa ang muhon kaysa sa, di ba? Sa kasulatan. Di ba? Bisan wala kasulatan basta gintamnan mo sa muhon imo na na. Di ba? Amo ni makita na to sa my Genesis chapter 31 verses 44 and 48 the covenant is a witness and the heap of stone is a witness the covenant sign is a witness and the covenant itself is a witness so ang pamangkot now how does that help you out in the new covenant or in the new testament oh buksan natin dira sa may First Peter chapter 3. Oh. First Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Ah. In this chapter, oh, isa ni sa mga hard passage, budlayo passage, there are several difficult things no, sa sininga passage. And Peter just in passing after mentioning the, the, the flood of Noah. No? Hamba niya sa may chapter 3, verse 21. Hamba niya dara. No? Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. No? Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
Tanah Muntah Dua Belah Anggil Hambanya Now corresponding to that baptism Now saves you No? Ano kono? Baptism saves you Do hindi mana muna? Di ba? Ano ang hambal yan? Salvation? Salvation is by grace alone Through Faith alone in Christ alone and corresponding to that baptism now saves you. <laughs> now it's true that Peter does help you out here, right? Look what he goes on to say: not the removal, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, in other words, si Peter diri nagahambal that I'm not talking about water baptism. Huh? I'm not talking about the water baptism. I'm talking about what water baptism symbolizes. Huh? Which is baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hindi ni sa water baptism ang ginahambal niya dira nga baptism now saves you. But ang ginahambal din ni Peter is that, no? Ang ginasimbolize din isang water baptism, no? The baptism of the Holy Spirit, no? The cleansing of the heart by grace of the Holy Spirit. No, ang ginahambal na din, the conscience of the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit or the outcome or the result of the Spirit's transformative work within an individual's life, no? No? Ang, ang, ang pag-transform sang, sang ginuos, sang, sang Holy Spirit sa kada isa sa aton, this generation brings about spiritual renewal, transformation, and a new life in, in accordance with, with what? With the will of, of God. Ang muna yung ginahambal ni, 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 ni Peter. That's what saves saves you, mali Peter. The work of the Spirit in you, that's what saves you. But isn't it interesting that he can say corresponding to that baptism now saves you. Huh? That baptism is a, a, a visible sign and seal of God's saving work in, in, in person's life. It symbolizes the inward reality of generation and faith. But it is not the source of salvation itself. Tano. But rather, salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone. With baptism, serving is a public declaration and confirmation of that faith in Christ Jesus. Huh? Amuna nga, hindi mag... Hindi mag Libog, oh, hindi mag, no? mag, ano na? Sorry. <laughs> Pangit kasi yung libog sa, <laughs> sa Tagalog, sorry. Hindi mag, ha? Huwag malito. Huwag <laughs> malito sa, sa verse na to. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ang baptism here is i symbolize ang ano? No. Baptism in spirit. No? And why can he say that, no? Ni Peter. Ano ang balita ni Peter? Because baptism is what? A covenant sign. Baptism is a covenant sign and sometimes in the Bible the covenant is called the covenant sign and sometimes the covenant sign is called the covenant and simply to show the close relationship between the sign that witnesses to the covenant huh? 
it's saying that sometimes in the Bible you'll see the names and the effects of the covenant sign applied to things which is fact they signify. No? And sometimes you'll see the reality called as if it's the covenant sign. And you see that over and over. No? It's the Bible. The point being here, even in this passage, we see an example of how the covenant sign is so closely related to the reality which it is supposed to set forth. That the reality can be called the sign, and the sign can be called the reality. Huh? The reality is a witness. The covenant is a witness. The heap of stone, the covenant sign is a witness. Both are called a witness in this passage. Huh? So covenants are for security. Even Laban knows that. Huh? That's the first thing we learn in this passage. If Laban wants to be secure and safe, if he wants to make sure that Jacob is never going to come across that boundary again and attack him, he needs to be in a covenant relationship. Years later, and give you nights would know this, and they would know that the only way they were going to be safe from the Israelites was to be in a covenant relationship. So, So, makita natin dili ang narrative illustrate the significance of covenant in addressing interpersonal conflict, establishing security, ka, no, to promote peace and reconciliation. Huh? Padayon kita in verses 40, 45 to to 55. No, makita natin dili ang content sa covenant. Huh? And so Laban seeks his covenant relationship and the content of that covenant is spread forth before you in verses 45 through 55. And let's look at that passage. Here the content of the covenant is set forth and every component of this covenant itself serves to confirm the security of the relationship. Huh? You'll see at least five components here no sa sining uh, 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 covenant uh, basa na to na in verse 45 to 49 so Jacob took a stone and set it up pillar Jacob said to his kinsmen gather stones they took stones and made a heap they ate there with the heap Laban called it Jagar Sahaduta, Jacob called it Galilean. Now, amun yung buti lingon, Jagar Sahaduta is Aramic phrase, meaning a heap of witness. No, ang Galilead, no, another lang, uh, language from Hebrew term, the same, the same ang, ang, ang meaning. No? No? And then Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore, he named it and Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between you and me when we are out of one another, another sight. Oh. So, when he is a Hebrew word meaning watchtower. Kumbaga, oh. Laban indicated it as a prayer of sorts that the Lord would watch the behavior of both parties no, to ensure that they stick to the agreement once they are out of sight to, of each other. No. So una diri, makita natin, isa sa mga components ng Sinanga Covenant is a covenant sign nga makita natin sa Sinanga mga verses 45 to 49 no ang pillar the heap of stone serves as a physical witness to the covenant 
Uh, so the covenant sign is talked about in those verses. Uh, Jacob noticed that he takes the initiative uh, to take stones, set it up as a pillar, and tells his kinsmen, and, his, and, and this includes his wives, and probably refers specifically to those who are his kinsmen uh, by, by marriage. No? That is his wives and his children, and anybody that Laban might want to claim belong to him, no? Gina hambal niya nga iyang akin. No? So hambal niya dira, go pick up a stone and you add it to his particular pile, gather stone. And so in verse 45 through 49, this heap is set up as a witness, no? a pillar of witness. No? But again, a witness to the covenant relationship which has been established between Sakai Laban kay Sakai Jacob oh, Pakita ko na ito kagina Silingan sa mispa oh. So ang first natin din ang makita ng component sa covenant is the covenant sign oh. And then in verses 50 and 52 all together ready begin and witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, See this heap and the pillar which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness. The pillar is a witness. So, ang kadwadira is mga component sa covenant is a responsibilities. Makita sa sinanga nga verses. Laban spells out what he wants out this covenant. Kay makita ta dira in verse 50 and verse 52, no halindra sa may verse 50, sa may verse 50 ay hambal dira. Now look, hambal dira ni ni Laban, I don't want you to take any other wives, no? Other than my daughters, no, lest they be displaced place in in the inheritance and I don't want you to mistreat them, no? Ka ka, ka sweet nya klasika tatay no. Ha? Makita natin diri, no? Amo ni sweet nga, nga tatay pero a father who had been so attentive to his daughter that they had said ang hambas ang mga daughter they felt like strangers to him. But now look at him, no? Look at him. He's so sweet here. <laughs> Grabe ka sweet si Laban. Those who have no natural affliction often pretend that it when it is to their advantage. Kung baga ginahambal diri, ginapakita diri ni Laban nga, Jacob, I deeply care about my daughters. I really want you to take good care of them. Not only my daughters, but my kaapuhan. Huh? Now Jacob had shown no indication whatsoever of mistreating these women. Diba? And yet, Laban who had clearly mistreated them is going to give him a lesson in how to treat his daughters. <laughs> Balis ka, no? Wala gid kinpaagyan ni Jacob. Yun yung mga kabataan niya. No? Pero... No, si Laban, di ba? Sa gin share sa mga first yung mga verses, kita natin kung paano nag-react ang iyong mga kabataan na feeling nila stranger sila pag abot sa ilang amay. No? Pero direct kita natin that no? grabe pa ang advice niya, grabe pa ang lesson niya ngayon tudlo sa kay, kay Laban. That surely no, crumbled Jacob and yet we have no recorded words from from him or Jacob say nothing okay no guru ko tango lang muna si Jacob while listening to no the lesson nga gina share or ginahambal sa iya ni 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 Laban and then he goes on in verse 42 and he says and furthermore we're going to set up this pillar and please never come this way never pass by this pillar in order to 
do me harm. No? After giving an instruction, no? Arina, they piled up that pillar of stone no? in order to do no harm to, to Laban. Never bring it on me. And of course, I'll never do the same either. And I would never come this way with an army to harm you, Jacob. No? But we really need to set up this pillar and we really need to call on the name of the God of Abraham for me to be able to trust a man like you not to come against me in warfare. No? Grabe ang ginaisip ni Laban, no? Nga ma-fight back si, no? mabalos ganyan si Jacob sa iya, no? And ang balnyadra, we need to call on the name of the God of Abraham for me to be able to trust a man like you. <laughs> huh? Not to come again, me and in, in, in warfare. And so, what, what Laban wants out of this is the protection of his daughter's possession and inheritance and significance in, in, in their family. But more than that, he wants security. Huh? Huh? Isn't it interesting that those who are most spiteful are also most fearful of spite in others? Huh? I mean, Laban is thinking of himself. Huh? If I were in Jacob's position, I'd, I'd, I'd want revenge and I'd, I'd better protect myself from, from, from revenge. It's <laughs> in the mind of Laban. Ambal din ni, ni John Calvin. Ambal niya, wicked men always judge others from their own disposition. Huh? Wicked men always judge others from their own disposition. Ba? In other words, they think that everybody else thinks as wickedly as they do. Huh? I mean, Laban has, has been setting their plotting revenge against Jacob for a week, di ba? Kung wala lang gin warningan sang ginoo si Laban, di ba? And he think, well, surely Jacob is doing the same towards, towards him. Huh? But it's very clear from this passage that all Jacob wants is to be free from, from, from Laban. And he just doesn't want to have to, to deal with him anymore. And he wants to be out of his sight, out of his presence, and out of his memory. Huh? He wants nothing from him and he wants to do nothing to him. And he just wants to, what? to go home. Ano lang ginag gusto ni Jacob? Gusto niya lang magpuli na sa ilang lugar. But Laban can't believe that a man would think like that. Nga man, because he has enmity and murder in his own heart. And he thinks that Jacob have enmity and murder in his. And so he seeks refuge in this covenant para safe. Nga hindi naging makabalo si Jacob. And in verse 54, And Jacob offered a sacrifice in the hill country and called his kinsmen to eat bread. They, are, they ate bread and spent the night in the hill country. Kita na natin diri ang responsible, the sacrificial offering. No? Jacob. No? Kita na tundre ang sacrificial offering he made. No? Jacob goes on to the mountain. No? We are told and he offers sacrifice. 
And this indicates that the covenant has been solemnized as an act of religious worship. Sacrifices are offered to God and Jacob offers his sacrifice. The gods to whom he offers that sacrifice is not the God of Laban. Diba? It's the one true God who is the fear of Isaac. And so God is being called to witness this relationship. No? Amo na ang ato nga ikatatlo dira nga 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 component sa sining covenant, no? sacrificial offering, no? And the pillar of witness, the responsibilities of the covenant and then the 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 sacrificial offering. And then it goes on in verse 54, no? to tell us that they sat down and they had a ceremonial meal together and the meal itself indicates the occasion of enmity and you don't want to sit down and eat with 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 somebody that diba? that you don't like diba? you sit down and you eat generally with those that those people that you you like huh? with whom you want to have fellowship a friendship relationship Diba? Awkward guru, no? <laughs> and the ceremonial meal confirming this covenant is to set forth the friendship that has been established here. Amo na yung ikaapat nga nga component dira sa ato nyo covenant. Ceremonial meal. Now, una, covenant sign, relation, uh, responsibilities, sacrificial offering, and then yung ikaapat is, is ceremonial meal no and then you see this fifth component in 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 verse 53 no? the god of abraham the god of nahor and god of their father judge between us so jacob swore by the fear of his father isaac no ang kaapat nga ikalimang component is makita uh, ang kalimang component is the oath. The oath. So in verse 49, Laban puts it this way. May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. Now, don't think, don't think that was a, a, a blessing. Sometimes that that's called a, a blessing of mispah. No? Mga ito nga blessing of mispa refers to a covenant of of peace or reconciliation between parties no often symbolized by an agreement or or blessing given at the place called mispa no it signifies a signific, it signifies a commitment to mutual respect trust and cooperation under the watchful eye of of God. Kagangining a blessing acknowledges God's presence and guidance in maintaining the covenant relationship between individuals. No? And that is the state of a fearful and a wicked man who is basically saying, Jacob, the Lord your God, no? the Lord may he your God, no? What's between you and me when we're absent from one one another? No? In other words, Laban is telling Jacob, Jacob, I'm I'm an honorable man. It seems like telling Jacob that Jacob, I am an honorable man. I would never do anything to harm you. When we are out of sight with one another, no. But you, Jacob, on the other hand, can be, can't be trusted. <laughs> so I call upon your God to keep a close eye on you, huh? so that you never do anything to me while we are apart. Oh, grabbing a. Grabe ginyo pagpaintindi ni Laban, no? Tungod sa iyang kahadlok. 
no sa kay Jacob nga Jacob will do harmful things para sa iya no and that's the oath that Laban lifts up he goes in verse 53 You'll see the rest of it. He says, The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor and the God of their father judge between us. Diba? Interesting, diba? That Laban, to cover his bases, appeals to the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, sort of your God and my God and the God of their father diba? before him. And Jacob's oath in Is, is, is not in the same name. Diba? Tanawabla kung din si, si, si Jacob yan nag, nag, nag-promise, nag-oath. No? Diba? It's interesting that Jacob's oath is in the name of his father Isaac and the God of his father Isaac. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. That's repetition for that God of, of Isaac. Interesting, isn't it? That Isaac never worshipped idols. Malumduman natin, Abraham was once an idol worshipper. Diba? But Isaac never did. In this entire humiliating conversation, Jacob's only resort is to get in one final dig. No? I'm not going to swear by idols or the gods of idol worshippers. No? I'm, I'm going to swear by the God of my father Isaac who never worshipped idols but only the true, the true God. The God who redeemed Abraham and brought him out of Ur of Chaldees. No? And so this oath is mutually binding and established a peaceful relationship between Jacob and Laban. And Laban then disappears no? from the biblical record. But that covenant itself is a desi- designed to establish security in a very distress- distrustful relationship between Jacob and Laban. Uh, and the divine covenant which God makes with us transforms that human form of a covenant and uses the various aspect of human con- covenants in order to convince us to God's good purposes toward us. Tanawa uh, natin in Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 6 verse 13. The author of Hebrews talked about what God has done in the divine covenant. No? And you're going to see two other components no? sa sinanga covenant. The covenant promise and the covenant oath. No? Basahon natin dira. All together already begin. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself no in hebrews chapter 6 starting from verse 13 it talks about how and when god made a promise sa kay abraham he swore by himself di ba emphasizing the certainty of his blessing and the multipli- multiplication of abraham's descendants as seen in genesis chapter 22 verse 16 ah uh, kung makita natin that Abraham patiently waited and ultimately received what was promised to him by God. Diba? Humans typically swear by, by, by something greater than themselves to confirm their oath and settle disputes. Right? Similarly, God to emphasize the unchangeable nature ng iyang uh, ng promise No, or as ang iyang purpose ano ginimod as ang gino swore an oath and providing a clear sign to those inheriting the promise uh, and this serves as a strong encouragement 
for us as we hold fast to the hope that's set before us, relying on the unchanging nature of God's promise and his, and his faithfulness. And this hope is indeed ours. No? This hope is indeed ours like an anchor of the soul. Amen? Firm and sure. Diba? So when Laban wanted to protect himself from the hateful aggression of Jacob, no? which didn't exist, he saw a covenant, a promise, and an oath. Diba? And God, and when God wanted to assure your doubting hearts that He would fulfill everything that He had promised, ano ginhimo niya? He gave you and me a covenant. And He swore an oath by Himself because there has no one greater by whom He could swear so that you could be assured that he was absolutely unchanging uh, in his purpose and not only to redeem you uh, but to give you every last single blessing that he has ever promised uh, in his in his word uh. so ano mga lesson yung makita natin diri First lesson is seeking peace through covenant. So a narrative three demonstrate the importance of seeking peace and reconciliation through formal agreements or, or covenant. Now, even in the midst of distrustful relationships, right? despite their differences, kita natin three that Jacob and Laban entered into a covenant para no, to establish security and ensure mutual respect and protection. Uh, seeking peace through covenant. Uh, kadua. Trusting in God's faithfulness. Oh. Ang narrative diri gina-highlight niya ang God's faithfulness in fulfilling his promises as seen as in his, in his covenant with with Abraham and his descendants. Ini nagatudlo sa aton to trust in God's unchanging nature oh, and to rely on his promises and finding assurance in his commit, commitment sa sa aton. Oh trust in God's faithfulness. No? And since this is the last day of Laban, no? from Jacob's experiences with Laban, no? ano ang mga na-learn natin yung mga lessons? No? So may gin brokodiri, no? tatlo. No? Amo na yung mga na uh, valuable lessons nga na learn natin sa sa ka, mga experiences ni Jacob with his father-in-law oh una dira is integrity and relationships oh, kita natin dira ang story ni Jacob with Laban oh, na ginapakita niya dire ang importance of integrity and relationships oh, despite facing no mistreatment and deception no from from his father-in-law kita natin dra that Jacob maintained his integrity and upheld his real responsibilities and this teaches us the importance of honesty even in difficult and in difficult uh, circumstances and the value of fulfilling our commitment with integrity no ikadua Trusting in God's providence. Uh, 
Kita natin dira throughout this time with Laban, Jacob experienced God's provisions and protection huh? despite facing challenges and uncertainties. Nag-remind ni sa atun to trust in God's providence uh, in our own lives, knowing that He is faithful to guide and provide for us, even in the midst of difficult situation. Katatlo. Seeking peace and reconciliation. Muna natunan natin subong. Despite their differences and conflicts, Jacob and Laban ultimately sought peace and reconciliation through a covenant agreement. Now, nagatudlo ini sa aton the about sang uh, importansya of seeking reconciliation in, in, in our relationship even when conflicts arise and the value of working towards mutual understanding and and forgiveness. Kung baga, the experiences of Jacob and Laban serve as a reminder of the importance of integrity, trust in God's providence, and seeking peace and reconciliation in our relationship. So, kita ta diri, tapos na ang kalbaryo ni Jacob sa iyang father-in-law. What's next? What's next in chapter 32? No? Because he's heading on in their homeland no sino naman ayhan ang iya nga to bangon dire ha yeah. ang iya ayhan nga utod no or ano naman nga mga challenges ang ato bangon dire ni Jacob and his family kabay nga ginugid kamayo sa aton let us pray heavenly father we thank you for the wisdom and insights gained after we study your holy word today. Lord, help us to apply those lessons in our lives, especially in our relationship with, with, with one another or with, 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 with others. And may we strive for reconciliation and peace, just as Jacob and, and Laban did. Lord, guide us with your grace and love as we seek to live according to your, to your will. Lord, this is our prayer in just name. Amen.